Remember two weeks ago when two Democrats in the Tennessee State House were expelled from office for participating in a gun safety protest at the Capitol? Republicans were deeply offended, saying the two Democrats violated rules of decorum. The vice chair of the House Republican Caucus went out of his way to say that such an offense would be considered contempt of court if the House floor was, in fact, a courtroom. Fast forward to today, when a local television investigative reporter, Phil Williams of the local CBS station, Phil Williams was the first to reveal that the same vice chair, Republican Scotty Campbell, was recently found guilty by an ethics subcommittee of violating House rules against harassment and discrimination in the workplace. According to that local reporting, the Republican's victim, an intern, said Scotty Campbell would consistently harass the intern for information about her sex life. The intern said that Mr. Campbell allegedly told her he fantasized about her and another intern in lewd acts. She also claims he grabbed her around her neck, making her recoil and feel sick. This situation escalated to a degree that the intern says she had to move out of the building where both she and the Republican had apartments in order to feel safe again. When confronted about these allegations by our local reporter, Republican Scotty Campbell claimed that the behavior in question consisted of, quote, consensual adult conversations. But the ethics subcommittee determined otherwise. In a letter to the Speaker of the Tennessee State House, the committee concluded the Ethics Subcommittee finds that Representative Campbell violated the policy against workplace discrimination and harassment. Now, take a good look at the date at the top of that memo. You can see it right there. March 29th, 2023. That means that when lawmakers voted to oust two Democrats on April 6th, it was well known, at least to the Speaker of the Tennessee State House, that a Republican also violated some pretty serious House rules. And yet the Republican faced zero public consequences until today when he was asked about it publicly. Representative Scotty Campbell tendered his resignation today. What did the House Speaker and his fellow Republicans know and when did they know it? That's what some are asking about a sexual harassment scandal involving a prominent GOP lawmaker. Hi, everyone. I'm Rory Johnston. And I'm Carrie Sharp. That scandal was first exposed yesterday by News Channel 5 Investigates, and the lawmaker resigned just hours later. R. Phil Williams was back on Capitol Hill this morning to continue his investigation. Representative Scotty Campbell's downfall came as quickly as anyone up here on Capitol Hill has ever seen. Even though he's gone, the questions remain. We have a very toxic culture up here, um, one that in which rules are not consistently applied. And in fact, um, sometimes things are covered up. For the so-called Tennessee Three, the entire situation reeks of hypocrisy. Republican Scotty Campbell resigned Thursday just hours after we confronted him with evidence that he had been found guilty in a secret hearing of sexually harassing college interns. His seat on the House floor now sits empty. At first, the representative said they weren't going to resign. Then we came back from lunch. They had resigned. And, we, and everyone here acted like nothing had happened. We just were supposed to act like everything was normal. But our News Channel 5 investigation discovered that more than a week before the three Democratic lawmakers face an expulsion vote for their gun violence protests on the House floor, House Speaker Cameron Sexton had been given this memorandum confirming that based on a staff investigation, an ethics subcommittee had found that Campbell violated the legislature's sexual harassment policy. He knew about it before they moved and he pushed to expel us for for talking out of turn. Meanwhile, they're covering up a sexual harassment situation with one for certain and possibly multiple interns. This resignation did not come because they felt like what they did was wrong. Mm -hmm. It came out because the news, because you brought it up in the news. They knew about this since March 29th. And it is despicable that it wasn't until this was made public that the speaker and the Republican leadership decided to do something. We never have any clue about it. So you had no idea? No. We found out when you when you put it out yesterday, we found out what took place. House Republican Caucus Chair Jeremy Faison insisted he was also in the dark about what his own vice chair was accused of doing. At no point during that time uh, am I aware of the information uh, about the details. The first time I learned about that was when you actually reported it. 
as did the House Speaker. That process uh, does not provide any details on any matter to the speakers. And so anything that happened, I am not privy to. Could you ask for it? I'm not, no, because it's protected information. Sexton blamed a process that was put in place after Republican Jeremy Durham was expelled in 2016 as part of a sexual harassment scandal. It created an ethics subcommittee composed of two Republicans and two Democrats to handle such complaints. Sexton says all he got was that vaguely worded letter. It sounds like this process is, is broken. Well, I think it's something that we need to take a look at. But at the same time, what you're trying to do is also protect the victim. As News Channel 5 first reported, the legislature also paid thousands of dollars to get one victim out of her lease at Capitol Towers, where she and Campbell each had apartments, paid to move her furniture back home, and to put her up in a downtown hotel for the rest of her internship. Legislative staff members are saying those payments are also secret. And that information, my understanding through Ethics Council, is protected information that even I cannot get or... But, but, but we're talking about taxpayer money. I understand, but I'm just saying is, is the way that that was set up, that is considered protected information. That if there's somebody behaving in such a way that's, be, that's put somebody else in harm or fear, we, we've got to deal with that immediately. I mean, it's horrific to think the abuse of the power up here as for the Tennessee Three, they say this scandal should not be forgotten. The reality is we need a full internal investigation that is public as to how uh, taxpayer dollars were used to cover up the actions of the former representative. Of course, this is not the first sexual harassment scandal to hit the Tennessee legislature and likely not the last. The question is, after this session is over, will anything really change? Phil Williams, News Channel 5 Investigates. It was discovered Campbell had quietly been found guilty of sexually harassing legislative interns, but nothing had happened, Phil, until today. That's right. We discovered that the East Tennessee Republican had been found guilty in that secret process of sexually harassing the college interns, accused of some extremely vulgar, vulgar behavior. But Campbell didn't lose his leadership post in the Republican caucus nor his committee seats. That all changed within hours after we confronted him this morning. Hey, Representative Campbell, how are you, sir? We wanted to give the East Tennessee Republican a chance to respond to the findings of our latest investigation of Tennessee's Capitol Hill. Uh, as I understand, you admitted to sexually harassing this intern. Give me just five seconds. Okay. Okay. In fact, Scotty Campbell already knew we were investigating some serious allegations. Hold on just a second about his relationship with at least one legislative intern, although he would soon divulge there was a second intern. Which direction do I need to look for your camera? D just look at so me. You, sure. Campbell is vice chair of the House Republican Caucus, and when three Democrats engaged in a gun violence protest on the House floor, he voted to expel all three. Yet this memo, obtained by News Channel 5 Investigates, shows a secret ethics panel recently concluded that based on a staff investigation, the ethics subcommittee finds that Representative Campbell violated the legislature's sexual harassment policy. I had consensual adult conversations with two adults off off property. One doesn't get uh, written up for consensual conversations. The, the letter says that you were guilty of violating the harassment policy. Uh, I think conversations are consensual once that's verbally agreed to. And if I choose to talk to any intern in the future, it will be recorded. One of the interns had an apartment in Capitol Towers, a condo apartment complex next to the Capitol where Campbell also had a place. The Republican lawmaker allegedly saw her and a 19-year-old intern going into her apartment. According to an account the victim sent to her university, Campbell made comments about how he was in his apartment imagining that we were performing sexual acts on one another and how it drove him crazy knowing that was happening so close to him. The woman and added, I uncomfortably explained that that was not happening and he insisted that he knew it was and asked me to tell him about it. She continued, I explained that she is my friend and he proceeded to describe how sexually attractive he finds her, referring to the 19-year-old intern. You were in your apartment imagining that they were performing sexual acts on one another? 
that's not true. So, so she's just making that up? Yes. On another occasion, the woman says she went to Campbell's apartment to return a wrench she had borrowed. Quote, he proceeded to ask how many men I've slept with. She recalled, I told him zero and he insisted I was lying and told me not to lie. He then proceeded to ask how many women I've slept with and said he bets girls go crazy over me. You uh, asked her about how many men she had slept with and then asked about how many women she had slept with? No. So, so you're saying she just she's just making all of this up? I'm saying that we had a, cons a consensual adult conversation. Then, according to the woman's account, the Republican leader offered cannabis gummies if she would show him tattoos and piercings on her body. He denies it. Her story, I told him absolutely not, and he begged me for several hugs. She says, I was getting progressively more afraid and uncomfortable. He then reached out his hand towards me and grabbed me around my neck. I recoiled and said I felt sick and immediately left. Again, Campbell says he didn't think he did anything wrong. I was told that if anything ever crossed the line, they would tell me directly. And I'm hearing it from Phil. But remember the report from the ethics panel finding that Campbell had indeed violated the harassment policy. So are you saying the ethics subcommittee is lying? I'm saying that I did not know that a workplace policy could be enforced when you're not at work. But News Channel 5 Investigates has learned that legislative officials took the complaints against Campbell so seriously that they've now spent thousands of dollars to get the intern out of her lease at Capitol Towers, to move her furniture back home, and to put her up in a downtown hotel until her internship is done. As for how Campbell thinks his vote to expel the Tennessee Three squares with his own behavior. They broke the house rules of decorum. And you broke the, the House policies regarding sexual harassment, according to this letter. I had a consensual conversation with adults. And when the adults informed me that we could talk and that there weren't guardrails, I talked to who I thought were my friends. Friends whose definition of friendship appears to be far different from this Republican's idea of what it means to be a friend. Again, Representative Campbell resigned about six hours after we confronted him with those allegations. Still, there are lots of questions that are not answered. Why did Speaker Sexton and other Republican leaders not act more decisively? And how much is this costing taxpayers? Legislative officials say that number is confidential, but you can bet we're not done investigating. Vicki? We know that. Thank you so much. Okay, so you see what is going on with the Tennessee Republican <laughs> um, vice chair of the House. He has nothing better to do except harass 19 year old interns, a girl who is fresh out of high school. She may go to college. This may be what she's passionate about. And She's interning and trying to learn and trying to get as much information as she can. But instead of him giving her the ins and outs of what life is within this um, field, he is trying to push his perverse, deviant sexual fantasies off on her. And basically telling her, if you want to move up or you want to rub elbows or you want to have a successful career is what he was telling her. You're going to have to sleep your way up to the these certain levels. He sees this girl doesn't want to protect her, is not acting civilized. Could be listed under W.I.E., white identity extremist because you're harassing a girl who is a year away from 18 and two years away from 17 a teenager um you he looks to be in his 40s if not 50s this is not a good look um I don't know if he's the type that would listen to a Kevin Samuels, but these young girls are not looking for you. They are not checking for you. If they are, it's because they're getting something out of it and they're probably drinking and doing drugs to get it out of their mind. But they 
are not interested. And he knew he just thought that he would throw his weight around as the vice chair and he she would go ahead and do it just for her career. But I'm glad that she didn't. And this is the hypocrite. At the end, you saw he's a damn hypocrite that he would sit there and say they violated house rules because they were standing up with children who said they don't want to go to school and get blown away and don't know if this is their last day on earth and said they violated decorum. But this six son of this disgusting POS violated the sexual harassment policy. He literally tried to stand on they violated decorum, but he was ready to violate someone's 19 year old daughter who is consistently giving him sign and telling him no. But he didn't care. He does not see himself as doing anything wrong. He doesn't see himself as a predator. He think it's he thinks it's okay. But it was not okay for those two black males to stand there with the children and fight for the children. But the Republicans care about the children. He sure didn't care about this young girl and how she would feel being put in a position where she would think her livelihood would be jeopardized if she didn't do certain acts she didn't want to do being two years away from 17. Just sick. What if that was her sister? What if that was her cousin? What if that was her good friend that she grew up um, who lived across the street from her? And he's setting up here talking about because he can't control himself. And this is what we talk about when they can't control themselves. Like they want women to cover up. That's still what does not help. Because I'm sure that this young girl was not wearing club attire to her internship, to her to the place of business. I'm sure she had on a suit. I'm sure she had on business attire and he still sexualized her. So it's not the women and what they're wearing. It's literally what's going on in their brain and what they're giving themselves permission to think and do. And it sounds like he was ready to harm her and take her by force, putting his hand around her neck. But then Lo and behold, the Republicans who, you know, are all about saving taxpayer money is using taxpayer money to move her out of the harm of one of their representatives. And nobody can set up here and tell you where these funds are going from, but they tell you that you're lazy and you're in poverty because you don't work hard enough. You don't grind hard enough. Uh, This economy, you know, people need to push. But yet they're taking the tax dollars that they're taking from you. To get a young girl away from a predator. Who was sitting as vice chair. No longer now. But. It's a slush fund to hide sexual predators. They knew this March 29th. And in April, he had the nerve to do this, even though everybody had got a copy of that document. Do you see the hypocrisy? Do you see the unfairness? Uh, oh, you know, it's we're progressive. There's no racism there. There's no, no two types of of lifestyle for the others versus colorless males. And colorless people. Yes, there are going to be colorless people that fall victim to them. But you can see how they are protected. Nobody said anything. Everybody can feign ignorance 
and it can be kept hush hush and everybody can pretend like they ignorant to what's going on that's why that committee was set up the way it is and it's the democrats and the republican but i find it mighty funny that the republicans have their mouth shut right now about this but i'll go ahead and leave it right here let me know what you think and i'll see you in the next one Mm -hmm.